We're on the Merlot. We've got the spreader over there working behind the mirror perfectly with its new gearbox on. And we've got Jack over there with his drone, which is up there. And we're spreading a bit of horse mop. Now, let me try and put you in the holder. Is it going to fit? Yeah. There we go. So I'll put that round a bit so you can see what's going on. There's the spreader there working. So we're spreading some horse mop, which is in the bucket there. There's, I don't know, 200 ton maybe of it. 20, 20, 20 10 ton loads. Uh, obviously you saw the video yesterday about George Eustace and saying there's loads of organic matter because because let's face it we, we just pile it up and leave it and don't actually do anything with it well that's obviously bull we do any bit of organic matter we put on the fields because we don't like buying fertiliser we didn't like buying it at £250 a tonne and we certainly don't like buying it now at a £1,000 a tonne although we've sort of had to buy a little bit so if George thinks we've got enough he's deluded if you take into account how much fertiliser is used in the UK and work it back what it equates to in organic matter. We, know that we need to like double the amount of cow muck and stuff we've got. So that would be 33 million tonnes. So on this farm, it would mean I would have to spread 44 tonne every day, five days a week, so 52 weeks a year, to replace what we buy in bag fertiliser. Now, this is the other catch to that. That fertiliser might have them nutritional value in it, but you don't get it at once. If you put fertiliser on, you get the nutritional value within sort of the first 28 to 60 days, maybe. Organic matter, likes this, you get it over like the next three, four, five years. So for the first three, four, five years, you'd have to put not 33 million extra tonnes on, like basically 100 million extra tonnes on perhaps. It, it's not there. It's not available. Um, someone saying what's cow milk worth a ton? A lot at the moment, I would say. Now you might get a little bit of a noise now from the Merlot as I as I load up because the camera's very good at picking up the vibrations of the Merlot working, and it it doesn't sound very nice, but it's not that loud in the cab. So we'll just. I don't know if you can see properly. You can obviously see the spreader. Can you see the bucket going up and down? Or do you want to switch in a bit more? There we go. Yeah, so I don't know what's going on. I don't know whether it... George has said that, obviously, the DEFRA minister, Department for sort of the Environment, to stop people going panic buying food, or he's just completely deluded and thinks that this, this organic matter and what is just sat around doing nothing. You know, people have... People have got it in the back pockets or they've been putting it in the wheelie bin. It, he's just totally clueless. So anyway, I asked him yesterday, did he want to come to a farm or any farm? Uh, I know another MP that helps me with the tractor on food bank. He's on the EFRA committee, which his job is to sort of audit, um, you know, hold DEFRA to account if they are not doing their job. So I messaged him this morning. I'd forgotten he was on it, to be honest. So I messaged him this morning. Anyway, he's going to call me later and he, they've got a committee meeting on Tuesday. So hopefully on Tuesday, he can ask some questions to, to DEFRA as to what, what they're playing at and how we're going to guarantee food security. The war in Ukraine's probably been going now for a month, I think, on Thursday, is it? 24th of February, I think it kicked off. Now... Putin's war strategy started a long time ago when he stitched up all the energy supplies and all the fertiliser supplies. That probably started last October. And his tanks might be in there firing and blowing things up. But in reality, you can play the long game of the food security for the world. And, you know, it's all very well seizing the super yachts and the oligarchs and stuff like that. But in, in a year or so, there'll be a... There'll be people in the world that can't afford food and we'll have to buy it out of Russia. And the same with the fertiliser and gas. I mean, Germany are already totally reliant on, on the gas for their industry. You know, their, their country grind to a halt if they stop using Russian oil. There we go. That's full now. So, quick beep and he knows and then he's off. I'll scrape the pile a bit leveller. 
I don't know whether you can still hear me. It seems to be. I can't see any questions. That suggests that it's crashed, does it? Don't know. If you can still hear me, let me know. It's quite wet under the pile, so I'm trying to just use the boom as much as I can so that I don't have to drive into the bit where it's holding the moisture. All right, according to the according to the messages, it's fine, it's all good. Can, can Harry Williams have a shout out? Can you just add? There we go, get another load ready for when he comes back. So what's the answer then? Uh, the answer to what we're going to do about fertiliser security. Um, I can only see one way really, and that is to the government to basically, I don't know whether it's possible, but to claim the CF fertiliser factories back and then try and find a way of getting some gas. Now, in America, when they started fracking, they started doing it in like the Midwest, which is, you know, arable land. And um, Andrew, hello. Arable land. So the idea was they, they frack it, they find the gas, and rather than pipe it to the to the cities, they just built fertilizer factories in in the sort of the, the Midwest arable belt and turn it into fertilizer. And then that meant then it didn't have to come out very far. Uh, someone said there what's the impaction issues amongst when it's six meters compared to thirty six. Yeah, terrible. So this field, although it's relatively dry because we're having to traffic every sort of five, six metres or whatever, we're going we're gonna to loosen it. We, but we'd, to be honest, we'll probably spread. Sorry, not spread. We'll probably, I'm saying spread because I'm looking at the spreader out the window. I don't know if you can see it on the horizon. No, maybe not. Um, there we go. In the corner over there. We're, we're going to probably sow this with a clay and drill, which has like a leading tine, which will rip through the stubble loosen under the beans we may likely do the top i don't know uh, this field is very close to the yard so maybe we'll um we'll do a trial on this one with with both drills one with the with the clay and drill and one with the the horse avatar and then that way then if we want if people want to hear and want to go and look at the trials or even myself we can just walk across the road and see it if, if you do a trial miles away, you don't tend to check it as much and you don't don't notice some of the stuff. Um, so what's everyone else doing today? You all uh, busy farming or basking in the sunshine in a beer garden? You see the tractor now just about to arrive. So an energy issue, I think the fertilizer is made. Why does it need to be gas? I think it's... Um, I don't actually know whether it's gas or it's just the energy required. They need a lot of high temperatures. I, I wasn't sure if you sort of split the gas up into different molecules that makes the, the, the nitrogen. That's how I always believe. But someone said the other day that you just use lots of energy and heat to pull the nitrogen out of the atmosphere. I missed something then about fertiliser production. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Is there anything farmers could do themselves to get together with investors, create your own fertiliser production plan? Well, Years ago, there used to be grant funding for doing different projects on farms. And they were looking at a project that would benefit a lot of farmers, like a collaboration. And I said, we should have our own fertilizer factory because that way then we're not getting ripped off by fertilizer manufacturers. Because I know at the moment it's a, it's a fortune. But even before that, it was always a lot dearer than it needed to be. So if you look at CF fertilizers it's owned by a huge company in america that's worth something like seven trillion dollars and if you look at their accounting for net last year i mean they'll be pretty switched on so they don't pay too much tax but i think they made something like 32 million now it's it's obviously a very profitable business well if you were if you were running that owned by farmers at cost, so you're only paying your energy costs, your staff costs, and your transport to move the stuff around, I would think that you can make it very, very cheaply. And that would stop it. I mean, when we were part of the EU, we actually had laws, which was crazy. It's called 
anti-dumping laws because the Russians used to make a lot of fertilizer. They, they obviously it's it's quite cheap to make and compared to what it's sold for. To stop them dumping their cheap fertilizer on the European markets, we had we had like um, tariffs to stop them doing that to protect the uh, already profitable EU fertilizer manufacturers. It's, it's absolutely bonkers. Well, they. I think we scrapped them not that long ago because we were short of fertiliser. But it just shows, isn't it? If, if the Russians can make it and dump it on our market, making it cheap, then that just shows how much profit there is in it. And I don't see why we can't have a sort of state-owned or a farmer-owned cooperative fertiliser factory. I mean, there's two of them at the moment that are sort of mothballed. Um, we could use that to sell the CO2 as well to other industry, whether that be medical or, or the slaughter industry. I don't know, we may, he worked out yesterday, that just on his farm he'd need 11,500 more tonne of organic matter to farm the way he is now. And he all, I'm not sure how much of that you heard, because it cut off. Did anyone hear me saying about it being a non-stop job spreading fur, spreading organic matter just on this farm alone, or did you miss that bit? Someone said it, it's not profitable. Let's just shove this over and then get myself ready for the next time he comes back empty. Someone's doing paperwork in Dublin. It's massive that place. It gets twice as big every year. Some might get that, some might not. So what did you hear up to before it crashed? Uh, basically, I was saying that my mate did some number crunching and he reckoned he'd need another 11,500 tonne of muck to farm the way he is now. And he has a considerable beef herd as well. And some sheep. So if I was to do that on our acreage, it would nearly be a full-time job for someone to spread him up every day just to replace what we get out of bag. Now, the other option is, of course, we don't buy ridiculously expensive fertilizer and take the risk and we grow crops without it. So that would mean instead of harvesting sort of like 12 million tonnes a year, 13 million tonnes of wheat in the UK each year, you'd, you'd only harvest maybe four or five. So then that means then you've got to go and buy the rest from another country. They might need it as well because it's dear for them. They might have dropped their production and then suddenly you've got this huge spiral where the, the poorest countries in the world can't afford food. And that will probably kick in in around 2024, I would say. There's a graph, I'll put it in today's video, of um, how many people's life depend on what they call the Harbour Bosch process of producing nitrogen fertiliser. And it's roughly basically half the population, you know, sort of, four to five billion people need synthetic fertilizer to, to feed them. Do all crops need the same amount of fertilizer? No, some don't. So beans, for instance, they make their own fertilizer and make a little bit for the crop after it. But all your sort of your cereals that you make, your bread, your wine, your beer, not your wine, sorry, cereals, you make beer um, out of bread, pasta, sort of your, your main staples that they require fertilizer to grow can you see the spread of there or not there we go twist the camera a bit I'm sure you soon see the spread of them listen to me waffling andrew's on it today it's the first time he's used it uh sam used to do spreading and andrew would probably load him anyway this time andrew's doing the spreading with his glamorous assistant Chloe is sat on with him. Anyway, I suppose I probably better call it a day for today before someone rings me and crashes my phone. But thanks for watching and I will see you. Could you possibly wood chip compost wood chip first? Either? Yeah, there's not a lot of well, unnutritional value in it though, to be honest. It can actually lock N up as it rots down as well. We did use to compost it before we used to use it for biomass. 
Right, I'm going to go before it crashes. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in about three or four hours, maybe five, on YouTube. Where do we stop it?